Okay, it looks like our participant count is uh, settling in, and I uh, know that there's a lot of lot of interest uh, in in what has been going on since yesterday. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Inzio. I'm CDOT's communications director. Um, we have a, a briefing set up this morning. Uh, first, with our executive director Shoshana Liu, um, also uh, here to brief our uh, the regional director uh, based out of our uh, Grand Junction Regional Office, Jason Smith, and CDOT's chief engineer, uh, Keith Stefanik. Um, our state bridge, bridge engineer, Michael Collins, is, uh, is also available on the call um, if there are more technical questions that come up. Um, but given that this is a fluid situation, we'll, we'll start with a brief and uh, we'll have uh, time for questions at the end if you can uh, please let us get through the, um, the briefing information first. Uh, with that, Director Liu, I will turn things over to you. Thanks, Matt, and thank you to everyone for joining us this morning. Um, this situation continues to develop, and we want to share the information that we have at this time um, as we help local communities deal with the significant disruptions that closing this bridge will cause, particularly in Gunnison, Hinsdale, and Montrose counties, but also elsewhere. Yesterday afternoon, at the recommendation of the Federal Highway Administration, our regulator, and specialized inspection teams on the ground, CDOT closed US 50 west of Gunnison due to concerns about cracking in the steel grinder of a bridge crossing the Blue Mesa Reservoir near the Dillon Pinnacles. This bridge is located at approximately milepost 136.3 on US 50. CDOT has been conducting a special inspection for high strength steel bridges, specifically for the two bridges along the Blue Mesa Reservoir as required by the Federal Highway Administration. This inspection was required because of known issues with similarly constructed bridges elsewhere in the country. A defect was observed during an early investigation of the bridge, and we immediately brought in a second inspection crew with specialized resources to perform another method for testing while the to determine whether the defect posed a safety hazard on the bridge. That second inspection took place yesterday, and it was during this inspection that we confirmed the need to close the segment of US 50. The fact that this issue was identified through a planned inspection of a bridge, which was based on counterparts elsewhere in the country, is an example of the safety process working. However, that does not diminish the tremendous disruption that closing it causes, particularly for local residents, emergency services, agriculture, and others. Please be assured that we've been in close touch uh, with all of our counterparts. We actually just got off a briefing call uh, with local um, services and have been discussing particularly the impacts to emergency services, healthcare, schools. And uh, we will commit to continuing to work with everyone who is impacted by this to help them work through the disruption as collaboratively and as fluidly as we can. To further discuss our work on the ground, I'm going to turn things over to our regional director, based in Grand Junction, Jason Smith, who will be able to talk a little bit about the specifics of the situation and also how it's being handled on the ground by CDOT and our counterparts at other agencies. And, and please know that we are treating this as an event with significance, not just to the counties who are immediately impacted, but to everyone who travels through the area. And um, it, it's something that we're gonna take with the utmost seriousness at the department. Thank you. Thank you, Director Luke. Uh, US 50 remains closed between Mile Point 131 near the intersection of Colorado Highway 92 and mile point 148. Local traffic will be allowed through the closure point to reach residents, but absolutely no traffic can cross the main bridge over the reservoir at this time. Motorists should use co-trip to plan alternate routes to their specific travel needs. Like Director Lou mentioned, this closure will create a significant detour for commuters between Montrose and Gunnison. The recommended detour routes through for through traffic is via Interstate 70 to the north or US 160 to the south. The northern detour route is approximately 354 miles and requires approximately six hours of travel time. The southern route on US 160 is 331 miles and requires nearly seven hours of travel time. We all understand the inconveniences this creates for everyone. And we are actively coordinating with county governments to improve options.
Oops, sorry about that. Disconnected for a second. And um, so we all understand the inconvenience this creates for everyone actively coordinating with county governments to improve the options for residents, businesses, and travelers on the Western Slope. In particular, we're exploring whether it's feasible at this point in the spring to clear the local seasonal routes that may be able to significantly reduce the detour time for local travelers. One of our top priorities of work um, to start with is for, to coordinate with local emergency response teams to develop a plan for emergency services to be able to respond between Montrose and Gunnison. Because those seasonal routes are mostly dirt or gravel roads, we know that the most significant traffic on those roads will create additional issues. Our maintenance and operations teams are working to preposition equipment and materials to quickly deal with the incident. When we are able to safely establish local detour routes, we will communicate those right away with an emphasis on local residents. We ask the media outlets outside of the immediate area to emphasize the current detours on I-70 and US 160. These routes remain far better for longer trips and we will seek to minimize further disruptions to local communities along with other detours. We are seeing a lot of social media posts saying there's a local detour. There isn't a local detour that is open at this time. Our local engineering team has been closely coordinating with some of the specialized groups that are based in Denver and describe those issues regarding the ongoing bridge inspections and the plan for repairs. I'll bring in CDOT's chief engineer, Keith Stefani. All right, uh, thanks Jason. And I'm gonna try to share my screen. I apologize, I tried to share it while Jason was talking and I think it muted. Um, uh, Matt, can you give me a heads up if you can hear me? All right. All right, so uh, my name is Keith Stefanik. I'm the uh, CDOT Chief Engineer, and I just wanted to walk through a few images um, that really uh, showcase some of the, the, the issues with this bridge. So the first picture here up on the screen, that is a picture that was scared, uh, shared yesterday. This is the uh, Blue Mason Reservoir Bridge at the Dillon uh, Pinnacles. As you'll see on this picture, uh, the, the spans that are, are closer to the, what we call the abutments um, or the end of the bridges are shorter in span and smaller in, in greater depth. And there's three spans uh, that you'll see that are a little bit taller um, in, in height or depth. Um, those are the three spans that we are uh, worried about. We uh, sent our, our bridge engineers out to do some routine inspections, um, uh, well, routine, inspect routine inspections for this, uh, this issue that's been identified across the nation with this, uh, what we call T1 steel, uh, uh, T1 steel, um, uh, T1 steel fabrication. Uh, the inspectors were out. Um, they noticed a few things going on um, with with the bridge. I'll I will switch to the next image here. I'm hoping that that shows up. Matt, can you confirm you see the second image? Yes. Okay. So the uh, the inspectors first noticed what you'll see in the in the middle of this uh, in the middle of this picture is almost like a little uh, a little rusted line uh, crack. That was first noticed by our inspectors. It created their concern. Um, what we did is we then mobilized some additional crews to come down, uh, scrape the the paint off, and then grind down uh, the, the the rusted area. Um, what that then then turned into is uh, you know, we'll click over the next picture here um, is. Once that's ground down, you'll see a little bit more of the apparent crack uh, along along the flange of the of the girder. Uh, this created a, a higher uh, level of concern. At that point in time, uh, in our coordination with our FHWA partners and also our uh, our staff bridge engineers, um, it was uh, determined that we needed to close uh, the the structure to um, to uh, traffic as well as our inspectors out on the bridge. So we pulled all of our inspectors off, off of the bridge. Um, and then we are taking all the information that we gained, we are doing a structural analysis to determine um, our, our necessary pass forward. Uh, so we felt that it was the, of, of utmost, utmost importance from a safety perspective to close this bridge um, so that we can continue our assessment uh, and then uh, make judgment, judgment calls later based upon that. Um, so, you know, our, our inspection, our inspection plans are to finalize, um, uh, in, in fact, and provide an accurate forecast, uh, and accurate forecast of what's occurring on that bridge. 
and then also to, to try to complete a time work of what that what that work looks like moving forward. Um, we'll be able to follow up with additional information for the public about the duration of the closure once we complete our analyses. Um, as more of our inspection work is complete, the more we'll know about this, this structure. Um, we'll also have more, more details to share about the condition of the bridges as well as any restrictions that will need to be remain in place uh, once our inspections are, are complete and our repair methods are determined. Um, with that, I'll turn it back to Director Lee. All right. Um, th thank you, Keith. And just to kind of re reiterate, uh, there's still a lot that is being learned about the situation in real time. The, as we mentioned, the second inspection that revealed the extent of the issue just took place yesterday. So while we're um, looking to disseminate as much as we know, as quickly as we know it, there's still going to be evolving information over the next few days, which we will certainly uh, share with the public just as soon as we can. You know, with that, I would just conclude by stressing once again the importance from our perspective of prioritizing the needs of the counties right around where the most acute impact is. You know, Jason mentioned the work on uh, local roads and detour routes, and you know, we are working to support the county to determine whether there's a way to get that local road open with state help um, just as soon as we can uh, to be able to prioritize those local needs. And uh, you know, we, we will be asking for everybody else's patience to prioritize how significant an impact this is for the folks right around the area um, and needing sort of mutual assistance to be able to prioritize their needs. Uh, so with that, we can open it up to any questions and uh, thanks again for joining this morning. Thanks, Director Liu, and uh, for uh, media outlets on the call. I, I hope at this point we all have, have some familiarity with the hand raise feature on, on Zoom. Um, that, that'll just help us keep track of folks who are looking to ask questions. So it, um, we, we, we've got some time for Q&A, so I'm happy to get those sorted out. But it, if uh, folks could just please use that raise hand um, on, on the lower bar a little bit towards the right. Uh, Ken, I see your hand raised. If you can unmute and go ahead. Ken, are you able to unmute? So I've seen Ken Dalrota. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing. Hi there. Um, I am a local and I live in Sapanero. So I'm kind of stuck on the island here. And um, I would like to know, is the bridge going to be open for residents? I have a 10-year-old daughter that's in Gunnison right now and I'm in Sapanero. So we need to have a resolution soon of how to get her back home. Um, and I'm just wanting to know, is the bridge available for residents only or what kind of priority are the residents that are immediately involved here? What kind of priority and who do we need to contact to get help to get um, family so we can all be joined together again? Uh, I, I can take that, that question, Matt. Um, hi, this is Keith Stefanik, CDOT Chief, uh, Chief Engineer. Um, I, I, I get the importance of, of getting back and forth. At this time, um, we do not even have our inspection crews out on this bridge. Um, so at this point in time, it is, it, we have not determined whether it's safe, um, to get anything, um, out on that bridge at this, at this time. Um, we are conducting our analysis as we speak, uh, to understand what kind of equipment um, that we can get out there to um, conduct further inspections and also that will produce what we can uh, allow on this bridge from an emergency management perspective um, or a potential uh, local option. Our first um, our, our, our first priority is to understand exactly what is going on with this bridge and what the structural capacity is. Um, the second uh, the second priority is to get emergency services um, and, and uh, and additional inspectors out on this bridge to understand um, the situation we're up against. And 
Jason, are we able to speak at, at this point to uh, some of the, the work with locals? I, I know that uh, we don't, as you mentioned, we don't have um, any lo local detours that have been established, although um, work is happening actively to, to set those up. Um, just just for you, ma'am, I, I um, not knowing the specific timing of, of um, when you're trying to um, you know reconnect uh, with with your family member. Um, also, want to suggest that you you work in in, uh, in, in close contact with uh, you know your local services um, who who might have some additional information uh, specific to local residences. So that, that you're uh, correct. We are working right now with the locals trying to get uh, some of the alternate routes and maybe open or it'd be for emergency services. So we don't know how long it'll take maybe to get some uh, more local routes established and stabilized and opened up for the communities. So for now, um, it is the longer detour routes that are going to have to be used. And I would just add to that that the state has offered assistance to the local communities in doing what we can to particularly get the routes that are seasonal open. Now, the issue with those routes at this time of year tends to be that many of them are still snowed in. So we've offered that if we can be helpful in plowing them out to get them open faster, we're ready and able to do that. Thanks, Director Liu. Um, we had a, a question in the chat go up. Um, relatively early, so we'll get that and then get back to a couple of other raised hands. Um, just, just to read this out loud, because um, we, we will eventually um, post this briefing to YouTube and want to make sure that um, you know, everyone can hear this. Um, question com coming in, um, the governor recently met with the U.S. Secretary of Transportation. Is the na nationwide issue with high strength steel bridges a general matter of concern and might they have addressed it? Uh, Director Liu, do you want to take this? Sure, I, I can take this and say that while it did not come up during the secretary's visit, the governor has since been in touch with the secretary of transportation now, to stress that uh, while it's critical that we catch these things before they happen, this is a very um, impactful closure for the state of Colorado and we need them to understand the impetus to get this open as quickly as possible. Now, it is a matter of sort of national conversation, which is why the bridge was being inspected at the outset, you know, based on known issues with other kinds of bridges like that elsewhere in the country. Um, that, that's that's why the inspection was taking place. And if I can quickly just address the second question in the chat, are you exploring any local detours in Gunnison County? To the previous conversation, yes. And you know, we, again, we just uh, got off of a call with the county where we're, we're talking about what it would take to get some of those seasonal roads open. And again, the state has offered assistance to the county um, and, and other surrounding counties that if we can help uh, plow out those roads faster, we're available to do that. Thanks, Director Liu. Um, got a couple hand, hands raised to, to get to. Uh, first, I see uh, Tom Hesse with Colorado Public Radio. Uh, Tom, go ahead and unmute. Good morning. Thanks for the time and the information. It's very helpful. Uh, it was mentioned that there were other bridges elsewhere in the country that prompted the inspection of this bridge. Is there anything that's known about those cases that might inform how long we could be looking at or the extent of repairs we're looking at for this bridge? Keith, go ahead. The, um, yes. So uh, there is a bunch of information um, uh, currently issued by FHWA regarding some of these these T1 steel bridges. Um, the the issue is is not not one bridge is, is particularly the same as an, another. There's different structure types. There's different issues that have been going on with them. Um, the repairs have ranged from some temporary repairs to some longer permanent repairs, depending on the severity and the structure type. So it's not a, a one size fits all um, repair solution for. Uh, for this bridge, it was a uh, or this type of, of of steel material. This this steel material was uh, generated in the in the 60s and 70s across the nation and utilized in a lot of a lot of the structural um, steel uh, bridges across the nation. Um, so uh, there's not a definite time frame that I can provide on this. It's going to come down to the severity of the of the defects on the bridge and the the repair methods. Um, and it'll differ. Uh, it'll differ bridge type from bridge type. Thanks, Keith. I see the the next hand raised is uh, 
Megan Clardy. Uh, Megan, go ahead and unmute. Hi guys, thanks for doing this. I'm with News 5 in the Springs. Um, I just have a couple quick questions. Is it fair to say that right now the seasonal routes are unusable because they have to be dug out? So there really is no emergency response getting across those today. Correct. We're working on trying to establish those routes right now. Okay. And then the second thing is, um, when was the last inspection of the bridge and what grade did it get? Uh, I, I don't have the the date in front of me um, on this, but the the, the last routine inspection did not um, find any of the of the defect defects on this on this bridge. Um, these the defects that are found are a more in depth analysis, um, being that uh, we were required to go back out and do these um, these these more detailed inspections on these types of bridges. So the last the last uh, uh, structure inspection that was completed on this bridge. Um, did not find these issues. Okay. Is it would it be fair to say they missed the issues? That is not fair. That would not be fair. Okay. And then the final thing, I think Jason may have touched on this briefly, but everybody wants a timeline. I know that's hard to give, but is there any are we talking weeks? Are we talking months? I mean, is there any idea for people who live there what how to set your expectation? Unfortunately, there is not a timeline at this at this point in time. Um we we will be looking to get um further information on the timeline as, as each day goes by. Uh, we need to understand uh, a lot more about this bridge before we are able to determine um, a specific timeline uh, for um, one, fully reopening, two, partial reopening, or three, emergency services only. Um, our priority right now is to get additional inspectors out there to understand um, what we are up against um, with this uh, these, these foreseen defects in this bridge. Are the inspectors planning to go out today, or I, I assume this is priority? Our inspectors are still down on, on location, but they they are not out on the bridge. Um, we we are if if we can determine that it's safe for them to go out there today, they will be out there today. Okay, so it's a safety issue. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. I uh, caught one more uh, question in the chat uh, before uh, an additional hand. And again, I'll just read this out. Uh, for the YouTube recording. Um, are you at this time considering the impact the closure will have on recreation on the reservoir and the importance of that to the regional economy? Uh, will there be any kind of economic relief contemplated such as a disaster loan if a disaster is in fact declared? I, I can take this one. First and foremost, we are absolutely aware of the economic significance of this area. You know, we've focused first and foremost on emergency services, healthcare, schools, and the kind of day-to-day -day, um, needs that the local communities will face most acutely. But you know, the economic significance from a tourism perspective is is all, also very central, and you know, we certainly know um, how important that is as we ramp into the summer months. You know, we will spend, as Keith said, the next couple of days figuring out exactly the extent of this and getting to the point where we can answer some of these very, very reasonable questions that we need to get answers to quickly. And once we have a sense of sort of the short, medium and long term of this incident, we will be able to get into the questions of disaster declarations and what we need to do to um, protect our neighbors in this area. Thanks, Director Liu. Uh Seen one more hand raised, uh, Katie Perk Parkins. Uh, go ahead and unmute. Hey there. Um, I was wondering if the inspection that was asked of this bridge is sparking any other inspections across the state for other bridges. Um, if CDOT has plans to now go look at other spots. I can I can take that. Um, so this type of steel, the T1 steel, is identified is only identified in two bridges, and both of these bridges um, are down in the Blue Mesa area. Uh, there's a there's a a second uh, T1 steel bridge, uh, approximately two miles west of the what we term this as the reservoir bridge. Um, our inspectors uh, are. That, that was bundled up with these inspections that are currently currently occurring. Um, our focus right now is this bridge, and then the, this we'll have a focus on that that second bridge. But those are the only two 
um, T1 steel bridges um, in the state of Colorado. Thanks, Keith, and thanks, Katie. Um, Olivia Prenzel, uh, go ahead and unmute. Hi there. Um, my name is Olivia. I'm with the Colorado Sun. Just two quick questions. Um, can you describe um, how large the crack is? And I know the second inspection was yesterday. When was the first one? Well, yes, I can. I can address that. Um, so there's. Uh, I would say that there's been one inspection ongoing uh, on this bridge. Uh, the the initial. Uh, the initial photos that I was showing was from Thursday of last week. Uh, we got the more in-depth um, inspection crews out, out onto the bridge um, early this week where they removed the paint and started uh, the detailed grinding of, of the crack. Um, the third the third step was to bring out what we refer to as ultra ultrasonic testing. Um, that is where um, we, we place a device up against the steel and do basically a sonar of the steel to determine if the crack is inside the steel. So the crack from a visible perspective is the is the image that I showed a little bit earlier, uh, which is, I would say, estimated at three to four inches. Um, but that crack um, is protrudes throughout um, the embedment of the steel. So it's, it's not just on the surface, but it's within the actual member, the structural member itself. Thanks, Olivia. Um, seeing one more question in the chat. Uh, you mentioned social media reports claiming there are local routes and those are wrong. Does that include reports that quote, the Lake City cutoff is open? Uh, Jason, you wanna take this? Yeah, that is correct. The Lake City cutoff is not open um, right now. It might be established um, you know, later on, but at this time it is not open. Thanks, Jason. And I'll just pause another moment um, in case there are additional hands to raise or, or questions coming in, but I'm not seeing any outstanding at the moment. Um, and, and while I'll do that, just to, uh, to begin to close things up, um, as uh, all of our presenters mentioned, this remains a, a fluid situation uh, with additional information forthcoming. Uh, and we will be uh, continuing to provide updates as we're able. Um, I'll, I'll pause them, seeing a few questions roll in. Um, first from KBUT, is repair or replacement of the bridge a more likely step towards reopening? Uh, Keith or Mike, I don't know if there's a, uh, any, any info we can provide so far. Yeah, I'm... Matt, we we just we are not at that point to provide an estimate on that. We we are uh, once our inspection crews can get back out on the structure, we will see if they are um, more defects um, similar to the one that has been found on on the other spans of the bridge, um, including the same span. So uh, we are we are working on the available information that we have right now and. Uh, in uh, analyzing repair methods as we speak, um, also uh, speaking uh, with uh, with several contractors in order to uh, procure a contractor to get out there to help uh, fix this. This is nothing that CDOT forces its, itself can uh, repair on the bridge. We we um, will be relying on some expert contracting um, methods to help repair this steel uh, on this bridge. So. Not quite, not not sure right now um, exactly um, the magnitude of the of or the quantity of repairs that are required, um, but we will know that information um, as the days progress. Thanks, Keith. A uh, couple more chat questions. Um, we schedule regular reoccurring briefings for the duration of the incident. Perhaps the CDOT webpage could list updates. Um, I'll actually take that first bit. Um, we're in the process of standing up a dedicated uh, website for for this uh, incident. Uh, it will then transition uh, when repair work begins. Um, that that project will, will also contain that information, and and we'll continue to um, have a regular tempo of, of updates, um, including additional background information um, on, on this uh, type of T1 steel that that's in question um, and, and the specific bridges. Um, to the last piece of this question, 
Uh, is there any chance the work in Little Blue Canyon could be expedited during this closure? Uh, Jason, I might glance your way for this. Um, so our local engineering team is working closely with Central Federal Lands and the project team out there to coordinate this work. Uh, right now, Central Federal, Federal Lands Project on Little Blue Canyon is scheduled to start back up in May. So depending on if this repair extends out into that um, and we have the overlapping timelines, uh, we're, we're going to have some discussion and we're going to have coordination in one way or another, um, whether it's closures um, or maybe even a delay of, of the uh, oh, or start of the uh, Little Blue Creek Canyon project. But but those uh, discussions are started. And I, I would I would reiterate that's a good question. We have the same question and we are raising that with the federal team. The Little Blue Canyon project is being run by a team at the Federal Highway Administration, and uh, we are going to be raising the same question with them. Uh, next couple of chat questions here. Uh, first, a request to show the picture of the, the crack again. Um, and while Keith is pulling that up, um, that, that's information that we'll also be looking to um, to post publicly so that that's, it's widely available for folks, um, but uh, as Keith is pulling it up. And with a uh, somewhat relevant uh, additional question from Tom Hesse, uh, when was uh, the bridging question built? And uh, Keith, if you can do two things at once and, and get us that date. Yeah, can you see the picture of Matt? Yes. Okay. And then the second answer is 1963. 1963, thank you. Uh, seeing a couple more chat questions. Uh, earlier, you mentioned the problem involves the three main spans. Uh, is there only one crack or are there more throughout the spans? Uh, so right now we have identified one crack on one of the spans. Um, at that point in time, we focused on that crack. Uh, after, we, after we saw the severity of it, we pulled our crews off. So whether the, those additional cracks or defects um, exhibit on those other three spans, it's more to come. Uh, we don't know that answer as of right now. Um, the, the identified uh, defect is, is particular, is at this location. And this is the only location we've found so far, but we have not completed our inspection. Thanks, Keith. And with a, uh, another steel related question here, um, is it age or another issue or both that is cropping up in high strength steel bridges nationwide? Um, does anyone have a general idea of how many such bridges there are, particularly in Colorado? Uh, so as I, as I uh, previously mentioned, there are two T1 steel bridges in, in the state of Colorado and they're both located um, adjacent to uh, uh, the Blue Mesa Reservoir location. So the other bridge is about two miles west of this the bridge that we uh, showed here. Um, is it an age issue or, or not? It, it's really, it's really just focused on this type of steel. Um, it, it was uh, it was fabricated in the 60s and 70s across the nation and realized on uh, on bridges. Um, fortunately, we we only have uh, two of these bridges uh, within our state. Um, th then I'm seeing a request to show the wide uh, shot of the whole bridge again, and and also that. That image is available on our, our social channels. And, and again, we'll be um, finding some more opportunities to make, make these widely available. Um, I'm seeing a hand raised for Ryan Drake that came up. Uh, Ryan, go ahead and unmute. You guys had mentioned that the Lake City cutoff is actually closed as well. Will people hey, be Lake. able to access Lake City from Colorado 149? coming from the west on the Gunnison side? Yes, they're able to go down uh, 149 where it connects to US 50 and go to Gunnison. Now, getting around, you know, from Hinsdale County over to Montrose, they're going to have to go around and use the detour. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Catching a couple more chat questions. Uh, visitors are asking if they can go under the bridge in their boats. Uh, what is the answer to that? So Matt, we had that question earlier on our uh, stakeholder call. Um, I believe someone from the 
uh, I can't remember if it was the uh, National Forest or uh, asked that question. Um, right now, as the as the bridge currently stands without any loading on it, any vehicles or any of that sort, it is it is structurally sound in its in its location. We at this time we do not believe that any of the recreation underneath it, underneath it needs to be stopped at that point in time. It is it is safe as it currently stands. We are just not um, at this time. We are are uh, are not um, able to put what we what we refer to as loading or vehicles on that bridge. So in its current state, it is safe. Um, uh, we will allow the the boaters to uh, go back and forth underneath the bridge um, with the live loads on it. Is what uh, is where our current focus is at. Thanks. And Keith, I have a request in the chat here to place the cursor on the approximate spot on the bridge uh, where the pictured crack was found. Can you see my cursor here? This? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yeah. So right around this general area, um, I would say mid mid span of the 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 middle where you see the three uh, the three deeper uh, girder depths. That middle span, uh, right around the middle of the bridge. Thanks, Keith and I. Um... As I'm tracking, we've uh, we've made our way through all of the remaining hands raised and chat questions, but I'll um, get, give it another second. And and again, just um, it, if we're coming to conclusion here, we we do plan to be um, pulling together additional information um, as our teams are able to pull it um, and providing both you know, virtual briefings like this and. Uh, you know, background information that, that we'll be pushing out through press releases. Um, and I'll quickly, uh, what, one more chat question popping up. I, I did see the National Park Service in the chat. Is it safe to say you're in communication and working with the National Park Service on this issue? Um, I, I can take that in a first instance. We, we've, uh, it, on our the CDOT communications team have, have been in, in contact with National Park Service uh, staff that um, it, in particular is assigned to uh, Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. And I um, don't know if there's more to add from other teams who might, might also have some direct points of contact. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, everyone, for your time here. Um, the uh, CDOT communications team uh, contact information was uh, part of the media advisory that that you all should have received. Um, it's also available online. Please, if there are additional uh, follow-up questions, we're happy to take those. And we will be pushing out additional information and, and opportunities for briefings as they become available and, and as we learn more. But uh, thanks again, everyone, for your time this morning.